I'm wondering, because um, because now, of course, uh, this conversation is going to fall inside of a larger cultural discourse around, you know, the integration of psychedelics and MDMA. I think, uh, Charlie, I've heard you say that MDMA is a psychedelic in, in some sense, at least, um, into into the <clears throat> into a civilization that presently has no space for it. And the only space it presently has for it, at least on the mainstream, is inside the medical Right. medical place and much of our work right now in that larger medical legalization sort of uh direction is around individuals and individual therapy but increasing yes. first off that's like not how most people take a psychedelics or mdma the vast majority of people are taking it in groups and culturally historically the vast majority of people who have taken entheogenic drugs in their tribes have done so in groups except for maybe the shaman right and so or whoever is the facilitator in that sense and so this this potential of being like hey what about what about mdma in for like group facilitated grief work or group facilitated and any kind of and, and by grief work you know grief work can include the loss uh or it can include the death of a person whom is cared about but it could also include i think for a lot of people who are experiencing trauma there's a lot of grief around what was experienced as the profound loss of safety and everything that came from it after that and I think that there's a grieving process that needs to be gone through to, for the fact that that was lost and one felt so. Well, guess what we need to grieve now, you know, the loss of safety that so many of us felt in the past 18 months with COVID, with COVID. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the loss of safety, the loss of, of well-being that comes from just normal social interactions that we had to hide away from each other from so uh that, that's a lot of loss and for some people real trauma especially for people who live alone mm -hmm. and uh so there's we're finding that a lot of people are um more or less traumatized by that at least here in new york city i don't know about other places and uh who need to process the time they've lost and the uh, the uh, the, uh, the well-being and social interaction they lost for so long, the mm -hmm. loss of normal life. It's like like going through a war. Loss of jobs. Loss of jobs. Loss of uh, loss of all kinds of things. And and uh, it's sort of like going through a war. Only even in war, people are usually huddled together. Here we had to huddle alone, and um, uh, there's a lot. Lot still to process about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, also there's the there's the grief of, and I'm not sure how many people are really letting themselves look at it because it is not easy to let in. But there's the grief around what's happening to the planet. Oh, you know, like, yes. oh, yeah. oh yeah. You're pretty you're pretty close to where I am geographically. You've been experiencing the heat. Mm -hmm. and it's this. It's only getting worse, and this is one of the hottest years on record. Or perhaps you know, you know record-breaking heat. It's only getting worse, and things are dying as a consequence. People and ecologies are dying as a consequence. And I mean, the pandemic was hard, but what's coming with climate change is it's going to be a lot worse. You know, it's worse. And um, uh, I think it's Joanna Macy years ago was talking about how the emotion that we need to process around climate change is called despair. Hmm. Um, and that there's so much of that because so many of us feel like, is this inevitable now? Or is this beyond uh, repair? Uh, and what can I do? And people fall into despair and then they shove it out of their minds and try to concentrate on other things. Uh, and so he was saying, no, we've got to look at and be in and process and work through the despair in order to then be capable of taking some kind of effective action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, um, this is a big deal. And 